Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this week's episode of Your Local Jummah. In this series, the Islam Channel team visits a masjid on the day of Jummah to film the khutbah and gather exclusive footage and interviews that we share to you, our audience, for your viewing pleasure. This week, we are fortunate to visit the UK Albanian Muslim Community and Cultural Centre, located near Queen's Park in northwest London. The centre was formerly known as Kosovo Islamic Centre UK, being founded and established in 1994 to fulfil the community's religious, educational, social and cultural needs. The masjid hosts the five daily prayers with a prayer area for both men and women. Welcome to the Albanian Mosque. This is a mosque which has been established nearly 16 years ago and we are uh, so happy that we having uh, today your visit. Thank you for coming. And now, Sheikh Saeed and Sheikh Zimmer shall kindly provide us with a tour of the masjid. This is the first entrance, it used to be the office entrance here. Then ladies entrance here in the middle, which leads you to basement, the area where ladies prayer. And of course, the garden you're seeing around is all made by volunteers, Brother Nasser and Brother Hamid, Afghani brothers, who done all this during the COVID. And uh, everyone in the area uh, are amazed and enjoying and uh, so happy to see this beautiful garden right outside and also they done inside so much. Now this is uh, our uh, Masjid prayer hall and uh, it is uh, wide enough for 250 or uh, 300 musalli. All the decoration done in this floor and the whole mosque is by volunteers. MashaAllah, this is a wonderful community here. Uh, Albanian builders and uh, the rest of the community, they've done their work. Inshallah, now we'll go to the basement, which is the ladies' praying area, just to show the other part of the mosque. This is the ladies' praying room in basement, but normally this is used for multifunctions, for classes, for meetings, for Aza, when people have any funeral or reception for uh, families here. They come because we have a canteen here also. But during the Ramadan also, we use this for iftar and all other. But ladies, normally, they pray their tarawih here. And we pray uh, not just uh, two Jumas, also we pray two tarawihs. Because of the crowd and uh, uh, great numbers of the people attending here. And normally, this is full for not just for tarawih, also for night prayers for ladies and upstairs also. This is the office of the Albanian Mosque. It's a place where we provide all the services uh, for the community, communication with people for uh, activities, programs, education, uh, funerals, uh, marriages, advice, young, old, whoever needs any uh, help, we're trying our best to be here, and especially for the uh, DAO programs. We have so many non-Muslims who are interested from neighbors from many different areas in London and outside London who contact us, visit us here. And many of them come and also they take Shahada here. And uh, we have uh, some weeks when quite few uh, take Shahada and uh, there are days uh, and uh, weeks and months where we have less and sometimes uh, uh, more. And it is all uh, showing that People have so much interest because Islam has that power of the spirituality and attraction. It is a complete, the most beautiful way of life, pure. It, it is based on purity and spirituality and the guidance people find through Islam. It makes them free of all the bad habits and brings best of the manners and characters and attitudes and relationships within the family, within the community, within society. Imam Saeed shall be doing the khutbah today to discuss how nothing in this world happens without the permission of Allah and nothing can compete against the power of God. Our beloved Prophet وسلم, saying Al-Qana kanzun la yafna To be satisfied, to be happy, to be grateful with what Allah has granted you it is an endless treasure. This is real wealth. This is real power. This is real honor to be praising Allah Almighty, to be obedient servant of Allah Almighty. All believers, this test 
of the life in this dunya is something which we have been created for. Because other creations don't have this honor of being Khalifatullahi fil ard, representatives of Allah. How you can be a representative if you are oppressor? How you can be a representative if you are envious? How you can be a representative if you are zalim, arrogant? Man tawadda alillah, rafa'ahullah. The way to be raising your station and position is not by being arrogant, by being humble. It's the opposite. This is why we do the sajda. To say, Ya Rabbi, I am your servant. I have nothing. Even this sajda is from you. You making this possible for me. If not, I even cannot do these things and this sajda. But because you're granting me such an honor, I am your servant. And this is how Allah elevating people by showing their humbleness, kindness, and justice. The empires and kingdoms can continue only with justice. And this is why the only empire which continued for nearly 1300 years was the empire of Islam from the Ahd of Sahaba from Prophet Sallallahu up to the last Sultan of the Ottoman Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan. Because they had the rule, the divine order, the divine command, the most perfect and balanced way of life. And they follow that and they give justice to Muslims and non-Muslims. Same, without any discrimination. They reached up to the gates of Vienna, Sultan Suleiman and Sultan Muhammad Fatih and Sultan Murad, something which our beloved Prophet Sallallahu praised. The Ottoman Sultan who conquered Istanbul, Constantinople, he said, Ni'mal Amir, Dalik al Amir, wa Ni'mal Jaysh, Dalik al Jaysh. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu saying, you will be conquering Istanbul. And the best commander is that commander who will be conquering and best army is that army. How he become best? Because his pure heart and his dedication and his justice. Sahab, Ashab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam heard about this hadith and they wanted to be among these soldiers of the best army and to be with that commander. And this is why Sayyidina Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, one of the great companions of our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ended being buried just outside the walls of the city of Istanbul. Because he, even he was in his late age, like 80 or something years, 90, nearly 90 years, but he wanted to be with that army because he was hoping he is among those soldiers who will be entering that city which Prophet Sallallahu declared that it will come. But it was not for him. He died and was buried there. He, he asked to be buried, not to be removed, to be taken away to Medina al Munawara. The best place to die, everyone wishing to be in Medina al Munawara. But he said, I want to be here. And Subhanallah, Allah making this miracle, mu'jizah, because of the word and pay of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi for him. Saying, Allah, Ya Khalid. His name was Khalid. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. Hayyan wa mayyita. Allah guard you, protect you, life and after death. And subhanallah, the Byzantine king wanted to remove his body from the grave which they buried him right outside Istanbul walls. But Sayyidina Muawiyah heard about intention of him removing. He sent a message to the king of Byzantine. He said, if somebody touching that place where he is buried, because he's special one, he's very close companion to Rasulullah I will send another army to finish your kingdom. And out of the fear, somebody going to do something there, he sent guards, he sent soldiers to protect. No one can touch his, because our beloved Rasulullah is saying, Harasak Allah, you may be guarded through life and after death. And even after 700 years, Allah granted this honor for the Ottoman Sultan, Sultan Muhammad Fatih. They went and they found these guards still keeping eye on that place, nobody can touch, and when they 
wanted to remove to inside the walls, inside the city to be buried there, they found his body like the day he was buried. Because this is the maqam of shuhada and awliya and salihin. Even the earth is prohibiting to affect or change their bodies. It is protected. Until the day of judgment, they will be raised with the same physical body as they were in this life. And they will be fresher than the one we are just alive physically at this moment. These are the companions of Rasulullah. This is why our beloved Prophet ﷺ said, my companions are like stars. Anyone you following, because through deserts people have to look for guidance through the stars to find the way, there was no navigation systems, then you will find the way of truth. These are the companions. These are the people also who follow the footsteps of the companions. Like Ottoman sultans, they coming through three continents to protect Islam and to raise Islam. And flag of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah through three continents. And one of great also honors Allah granting for Sultan Muhammad Fatih, when he reached to the city of Sarajevo, he conquered it. But it came to his mind, fearing same thing will happen with this city if he's building mosques like it happened in Cordoba and in Andalusia. And he was worried and he stopped army from building the mosque. He said, let's go back again. And he making istikhara and dua to Allah Almighty that he granting for this place when he is building never to turn again to churches or anything. This place remains for Islam up to the end of the time. And before Fajr time, he is seeing Prophet in his dream and saying, you have been granted what you're asking. And Prophet was with Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ali. And when he wake up, he was so happy. He's asking one of the ulama, what is the meaning? Three companions, Khulafa coming, but Sayyidina Omar not coming. He said, with Sayyidina Abu Bakr, these people who coming to this place, in this place to Islam, they will remain in this deen with sincerity, with siddiqiyah, like Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And we very generous and kind. Same with Sayyidina Uthman, with high adab and haya, and also very generous and brave. And with Sayyidina Ali, same, but with, and he was concerned why Sayyidina Omar didn't attend. He said, that is a sign this area will not have a full justice. Because Sayyidina Omar, radiallahu ta'ala an, anhu, he's representing perfect justice. He was the most just companion. And this is what the power of justice making the nations to be raised. But when you're losing that, you're losing everything. And this will be the case because all other nations have been granted this opportunity, especially in our century. All of them fall down. They couldn't keep justice. They were just keeping the benefits of the power of wealth and kingdom for their own people and oppressing others. Only Islam. There is not a single case throughout Europe for 700 years with the justice of the Ottomans when one church or one synagogue was destroyed. The opposite. People, when they wanted, they helped them to build them. And those who wanted to come to Islam, the bab, the door is wide open. We were able to do multiple interviews at the UK Albanian Muslim Community and Cultural Centre to get a better idea of how this masjid allows the community within Queen's Park to pray and learn about Islam. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We welcome Islam Channel to our mosque. The Albanian Mosque in London is the first uh, mosque established for the community. About 16 years ago, Sheikh Bahari, myself, uh, Brother Wasti, we were three people who started this project. And Alhamdulillah, after many years, we managed to establish and now we have this center in Queen's Park and we are already just planning now to rebuild and have a new built project for 14 floors, which will be a mosque, community center and educational center and all activities or programs with community needs in this area. And inshallah, we're hoping many other centers and mosques will be uh, established as it is the best way of protecting the uh, identity and culture and believe through having centers like this for the communities. Uh, of course, we're hoping inshallah, the centers will be shelters protecting future generations and they will be able not just to remain as good Muslims also, but to provide the communities around 
to be like a bridge for understanding of the beauty and perfection of this deen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and viewers of Islam television, TV, my name is Jafar Parks. That's an English name. I'm an English Muslim. I reverted to Islam in 1988. My date of birth is 1955. I'm 69 years old. So I've been a Muslim for more than half of my life. I actually first encounter with the blessings of Islam was the year before in 1987 when I was in Paris and I went for a tea in the mosque in Paris and I observed people worshipping in the way that Muslims do, bowing and prostrating and something in my heart resonated with what I saw but that was not the moment that I embraced Islam, that was a year later by the hand of my beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Nazim al kaburusi and I took Shahada and Bayar at his hand and since then I have, and from that time until now, I've enjoyed all of the beauty and the blessings of Islam. I have five children by my ex-wife, Muslim children, so they are representing English Muslims and our duty now as Muslims in this country, in my opinion, is to spread the word of Islam in such a way that it becomes something that is recognizably uh, the truth for the English people. Because English people, they are good people, they have a lot of the qualities that makes a good Muslim and they just need to see the right side of Islam and not, not the, the thing that is coming through the media that is showing uh, the incorrect ideas about Islam. And may Allah guide everybody and bless them and keep us on the way of truth. And may our last breath be on the way of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Assalamu Alaikum. My name is Ayad Al Tuhafi. I am the, I've been blessed to be the architect on the new development of this mosque. We have been working on this development for the last four years and we are inshallah very, very close to getting the planning permission. We were promised to have been given this planning permission on the 13th of November, a few, few weeks ago, but they requested little uh, changes. So inshallah, this mosque will be demolished very soon and we will be building a state of an art uh, community center on 13 floors. So we increase the capacity to over 1,000 people, inshallah. We will have coffee shop, restaurants, and offices to rent. So the, uh, the mosque, inshallah, will have uh, financial sustainability. So the income coming will be paying for the maintenance of the mosque. And uh, inshallah, we will be building this mosque uh, in the next uh, few months. Um, the masjid is very good, but it's a bit small, so I think we need a bigger masjid because a lot of people pray outside. Mostly I come here for Juma, and uh, we, we, we come here for teaching the Quran, we come for Ramadan during Ramadan. My name is Khalid, I am one of the uh, uh, prayers in the masjid. I'm coming for past 10 years in this masjid. Alhamdulillah, we find very good community very comfortable place. Alhamdulillah, we have good mashaykh leading the Salat and Salat to Jummah. We have got um, good communication with people here. Uh, very happy with uh, everything in this masjid, Alhamdulillah. The UK Albanian Muslim Community and Cultural Centre is a masjid that allows for Muslims to pray in congregation for the five daily prayers and participate in social activities. Despite the masjid being relatively small, it does not stop the masjid from trying to help the local community. Inshallah, the masjid achieves its goal of expanding and modernizing its current state. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum. <laughs>